on the death of a next-door neighbor, so much younger and with a tall young son in the house above ours on a hill, it seemed that death had blundered once again. Was it poor directions or the blurring rain, the two small numerals on the main mailbox that sent his dark car up the wrong winding driveway? Surely it was me he was looking for, overripe, childless, gaudy with appetite, the one who should be ghosting over the rooftops, not standing barefoot in this kitchen on a sun-shot October morning after eight days and nights of downpour, me with my presumptuous breathing, my arrogant love of coffee and the colorful leaves beyond these windows. The weight of my clothes, not his, might hang in the darkness of a closet today, my rake idle, my pen across a notebook. The harmony of this house, not his, might be missing a voice, the hallways alive with the cry of the telephone. If only death had checked his cracked leather map, then bent to wipe the fog from the windshield with an empty sleeve. <clears throat> what love does. A fine thing, or so it sounds on the radio in the summer with all the windows rolled down, yet it pierces not only the heart but the eyeball and the scrotum and the little target of the nipple with arrows. It turns everything into a symbol, like a storm that breaks loose in the final chapter of a long novel. And it may add sparkle to a morning or deepen a night when the bed is ringed with fire. It teaches you new joys and new maneuvers, the takedown, the reversal, the escape. But mostly it comes and goes, a bee visiting the center of one flower, then another. Even as the ink is drying on her name, love is off to visit someone in another city, a city with two steeples, rows of brick chimney pots, and a school with a tree-lined entrance. It will travel through the night to get there, and it will arrive like an archangel through a gate no one ever noticed before. Thank you.